Eric Kramer, former Detroit Lions quarterback, Chicago Bears. It's my childhood right here in the 90s. I remember watching Eric Kramer growing up. Hell, he was a quarterback in 91 when the Lions had that magical run to the NFC title game. Eric, good morning, man. Welcome to the Morning Rose. Ponte Hill, Joe Shasky, the Butcher. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, man. Just enjoying the little conversation you guys just had with that Lions fan, who, by the way, is representative of about a million fans in in, in and around the city of Detroit. Wow. Wow. Now, you, we're going to get to your book because you, you, I we talked to Bernie Colzar earlier in the season, and I remember you playing as a quarterback, but I didn't know your backstory here. You have the book, The Ultimate Comeback, Eric Kramer's powerful memoir offers hope and healing amidst mental health struggles. So we'll get to that in just a second because we understand how violent this game is and how depressed some former players get after football. But let's start with the Lions here. Uh, what do you remember about that 91 season? How, what do you remember about the city getting behind you guys during that 91 year in which you guys lost to Washington in, in, in the NFC title game? It was a magical run, and we came out of nowhere. We had gone 6-10, and 10, I think, the year before. and But it was a very, like this year, a very talented team, uh, young. And um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, the season kind of about two-thirds of the way through took a turn when Mike Otley went down and uh, he was a right guard and uh, on a play against the Rams and was, uh, didn't know it at the time, but was uh, paralyzed from the waist down. And, um, and so anyway, that, that was um, a rallying cry is not the way to describe it, but it uh, I'd say sort of galvanized us in Mike's honor to continue on playing with him in mind. And um, so, you know, we we um, went on a late season run as well. I think we ripped off about five or six in a row, and um, we were we were kind of like this year's Lions. Uh, we were good in all three phases, and um, so anyway, that that's what I remember from that year. And uh, obviously, we ran into a buzzsaw at the end right. to start the year. Against Washington, where we lost forty-five to nothing, oh, and then where we lost forty something to ten, uh, where we're I think we're down seventeen ten at halftime, but clearly we were overmatched. And um, so, anyway, that was, in my opinion, though, as far as Washington goes, had to be one of the best teams in NFL history. Yeah, that's what they say. The Hogs up front, Shasky. Yeah, Gary Clark, Art Monk. I mean, they yeah. were they were special. Walk me through the psyche of a Detroit Lion fan. We've heard from you. We've heard from Jamel Hill. We've heard from all these different people. It's like the biggest game in the history of the state. Uh, what, what's it like being a Detroit Lions fan? Because it sounds like you're still revered to this day because of that NFC Championship game appearance. Well, in that, in that sort of, I'm grateful in one sense, but it's sad in another, in that it's taken 30-plus years to get back to an NFC Championship game and uh, to win – you know, for the first time in Lions history, 14 games in a season. And just, uh, I don't know. I, I think that this team, to me, for the Lions, is special in the sense that um, they're not just talented. They've got a sense of direction, clear direction, from the top on down. And it seems like, you know, this team feels the way – that other past Lion teams didn't, which means um, from the ownership down to the general manager, down to the head coach, down to the players, they're all in the same boat, rolling the same oars. And uh, that makes for a, for it makes to me, and they're all young, and that makes for me to be like a, t- a team that's going to be around a while. Yep. Eric Kramer here on the Morning Rose, courtesy of the Boxing Girls and Guest Line, former quarterback with the Lions, Bears, Coach the Chargers started off his career with Atlanta, but had a magical 91 season with the Detroit Lions as they advance to the industry title game. All right, what's your perspective on the 49ers? You were playing during the 90s, during the heyday when the Niners were winning championships, and it seems like yeah. they were appearing at NFC title games every single season. This right. year's 49ers team, and Brock Purdy, you played that position. What's your thoughts on Brock Purdy? I think he's great. I mean, he, he's, you know, faltered at times this year, um, particularly at times when nobody thought he would. And like last game, for example. Right. Um, but uh, I think by and large, uh, he is, I think, currently the best person story in the NFL. Um, in that 
you know, he wasn't even the guy the 49ers wanted until the last pick in the draft. Yeah. And, and uh, yet, uh, given a chance and given somebody's work ethic, um, look what he's done. And uh, so it's, it's, you know, he amongst other players on that team um, have all added up to make the, what the 49ers are today, given that they've got, again, kind of what the Lions had, but before the Lions is they've got, you know, upper management, um, coaching staff, players all look like they're rowing their oars in the same direction. What is it about Dan Campbell and Jared Goff that has really endeared you to them? Like, what is it about their story uh, getting to this point that really makes you a believer in both guys? Well, I don't know either one of them personally, but um, from the outside, what it looks like is that uh, Dan has a clear sense of direction and he's not only played the game, but he can, uh, he players respect him because of where he's been and what he, uh, how he believes in them. Like there's one clear message in that building and it's from, uh, Sheila Hamp or Sheila Ford Hamp on down to Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell and everybody. And I think that that to me is what, you know, it, Dan Campbell doesn't just believe in, um, uh, in Jared Goff, although that is huge. Um, you know, he, he's an emotional guy that isn't afraid to show it and really believes in what not only he's doing, but what everyone around him is doing that he's helped guide and, and motivate. So I think the combination of Jared Goff and he together are magical. And I love the fact that Jared Goff, since he's been there, remember when he went there, they were what? Three and 13. Yeah, they're awful. And <laughs> he was a cast off. He was kind of a throwaway in that deal to get to a, for the Rams to acquire um, Matthew Stafford. And so Matthew Stafford didn't have to rebuild a career. Um, he just got to play around really good players under a really good coach. Mm. And, and so, uh, uh, Jared golf, even though they were both number one picks had to actually resurrect his career. Right. And, and so which he's done in a fairly short amount of time. And I love the fact that during this year, when everybody was patting him on the back after 10 or 11, 12 great games, he starts to falter himself. He doesn't panic. Dan Campbell doesn't panic. The players around him don't panic. And he stays resilient to what he's always done. All of a sudden, guess who's the best quarterback in the NFL? Or, or literally at the top. If you're talking about fourth quarters, it's not even close. Mm. And, and, and that's what I love to see in other players. Not necessarily specific to quarterbacks, but resiliency in people. Um, is well, what it's all about. Well, I want to talk about your resi- resiliency here. Eric, Eric Kramer here on the Boxing Girls and Guest Line. We'll get you out with this. Your book, The Ultimate Comeback, Surviving a Suicide Attempt, Conquering Depression, and Living with a Purpose. Now, it's a deep story here. And we don't, you know, we don't mess around with suicide. We've heard Bernie Kozar's story. We've had him on about all the surgeries, concussions, some of the relapses he had. Eric, what was it about? Was it retirement? Was it not playing a game? What led to some of these events here and which led you to write the book about it? Well, when you're talking about suicide, that was a suicide attempt. Anyway, that was what happened to me when I was overwhelmed, literally overwhelmed by a series of uh, tragic family events. Mm. Um, Starting my son Griffin um, had actually been in uh, rehab beginning a drug rehab in 10th grade, uh, in high school. Wow. And, and so, uh, you know, he was, um, you know, he kind of ran the gamut where, why am I here to thanks that you got me here to, Oh, that was brainwashing. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, by the time he got out of, um, outpatient, program he went to high school at thousand oaks high school which he 
then went right back to struggling in school again. And, um, and so eventually he, um, relapsed and, um, it was a heroin overdose. And, uh, so he, he eventually one morning didn't, didn't wake up. Oh, and, uh, sorry to hear that. Well, oh, go ahead. And yeah. And then, uh, my mom had prior to that, um, the year before, or actually earlier, uh, that year, um, so Griffin passed away October 30th, 2011. Earlier that year, um, the day after Mother's Day, my mom found out she had stage four uterine cancer. Um, and that in itself was an ordeal. Um, and she survived a ridiculous operation uh, where she then afterward had to go through, you know, a lot of chemotherapy and, um, uh, you know, and it, it was during that time actually when she and I got close and, um, and then, you know, she, eventually she went into remission and eventually she, you know, her cancer came back. And so she passed away in July of the following year. Mm. And then right around that time, my dad, who I was never really close with, um, but, uh, Eventually, around that time, my mom passed away. Uh, he uh, had some untreated acid reflux. So to those of you out there that do get it, treat it, because his went untreated, which then turned into esophageal cancer, which was like a three-year decline, Jeez. like steady decline. And, uh, and then Dylan, my younger son, uh, he wasn't living with me at the time either. And so, um, yeah, it just, uh, it was a, you know, I hate to say it was events that conspired against me, right. but it was. And, and what I, and it wasn't like I wasn't seeing, seeing a therapist right. at various stages, but eventually I stopped and, um, and it didn't take long after that before I, I literally remember driving down the road one day and it was like this little feeling that I had before, uh, when depression comes, there's, there's like, it's, there's like a knock at the door, but the door comes swinging open. Like there's, it's, <laughs> it's like a fog or a flood that comes in that you cannot, you know, resist. Um, so anyway, that just, basically at that time led me on a downward spiral that I couldn't get out of. And, you know, it's like when you play a sport or when you commit yourself to something, um, there's always the process of working through it, right? So you're always sort of building up some resilience as you go. Um, which is kind of how that all happened is, uh, you know, it wasn't like I never sought out treatment, I, uh, therapy, I had in different times in, in my life. Um, but anyway, so that, that's what happened. And then eventually, uh, I lost all perspective and lost my wits really. And, uh, conspired to, you know, research out the best way to do this, uh, which was what I did, uh, shoot myself underneath my chin. And, uh, fortunately we're still here and I'm talking about this yeah. um, wow. because I do not feel the same way I once did. That was what eight ish years, nine years ago, almost. And um, so times have certainly changed. Um, and uh, as it says, I'm living with a purpose and I would, I would say multiple purposes, but um, it, it's, uh, it's been an ordeal, but I really have to thank not only the doctors um, who saved my life, but the, uh, you know, the many people who were there um, throughout that time wow. and still are. Wow. Eric, man. Well, we're proud of you for fighting through that. That's not easy. doesn't sound easy. Sounds heavy. Um, the ultimate comeback, surviving a suicide attempt, conquering depression, and living with a purpose. We're glad that you're living with multiple purposes, and we're glad that you're able to talk to us about this football game on Sunday. Uh, Eric, take care. Keep Keep take care of your mentals, man. We'll be praying for you. It sounds like a fight that you'll continue to fight every single day of your life, but we're glad that you're still alive, breathing, man. Very good. Grateful to be on your show. You guys have fun, 
and enjoy your day. Absolutely. Eric Kramer, former Lions quarterback, Bears quarterback here on the morning roast. And yeah, it got a little heavy there. It got a little heavy. <laughs> the ultimate comeback, surviving a suicide attempt, conquering depression, and living with the purpose. I was talking to somebody, and 